Alrighty, welcome back. This video is going to cover how to make grounds randomly fall out from under the player. That's right, I'm going to revisit the Infinite Runner project because the question of how to actually implement this came up in a YouTube comment, also in Discord and in my email. And since the falling buildings idea is pretty true to Cannibal, which is what this series was based on, I felt it justified revisiting this for one last round. Okay, so the falling ground itself, the implementation, isn't all that complicated. And since the question also revolved around the idea of attaching scripts randomly at runtime, I'll stick to that method, even though I probably do it differently myself. So let's get started. I'm going to go over to my assets, create a script. Uh, this is going to be the ground fall. And this script is going to have one purpose, which is just making the ground fall. Okay, let's start with some properties here. Like, um, we don't want it to a fall. We don't want the ground to fall immediately. Basically, as soon as the player lands on it the first time, then it starts falling. Uh, so let's create a flag for that. And then once that's true, we're going to start falling. And then we're going to have some rate at which we fall. And just default that to one unit per second. Um, so let's jump to the fixed update and just start making it fall. Uh, so if should fall, then we're going to just take our position, reduce it by reduce the Y component of the position by the fall amount. And that's pretty much it. So let's go to position. Uh, I'm going to pre-calculate this uh, fall amount is fall speed multiplied by fixed delta time. And then position dot Y minus equals that fall amount, fall amount. And then we assign that. And that's really everything that's required. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this to true by default, just so we can see it work. And then I'm going to open up the ground script because that's responsible for generating the actual ground. So it's also going to decide whether or not this script is also going to get attached. So ground. All right, so let's jump on down to where that's generate ground. Okay, so just before we add all the obstacles, seems like a good spot. Okay, so let's create some random chance that this is going to occur. So if random dot range uh, somewhere from zero to uh, three, if it equals zero, so that'll be a one in three chance. Then we're going to add the ground fall script. So ground fall, ground fall, ground fall, fall is, and the way of doing this at runtime is a method called add component. So we just grab the game object, which is go. That is the name of the generated game object. Go, go dot add component. And then you specify the type inside of these uh, less than greater than signs, ground fall. And then that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to go ahead and play the game with this and see if any of the grounds start falling. And then you'll start to see a lot of broken things, but the grounds will be falling. So there, immediately that one's falling. I actually don't even remember the controls. <laughs> and there it's falling. And the, the one that got generated after that is also falling. And that's not necessarily because of the one in three chance. So here we go. It's not falling yet. Now this one's falling. And you can see the, also that the boxes are kind of floating in midair, even though it's falling. So we're going to have to fix that. The player can't even land on it. So we're going to have to fix that. So one thing is that the ground height, which is something that the player uses to land, this ground height variable, that's only set once when the ground is first created. So what we can do easily is just move this into update. And now ground height is always going to reflect where the ground is as it's falling, it's going to constantly be getting updated. Another thing is making sure that those, uh, those obstacles, those boxes also fall down with the ground, as well as the player himself while, uh, while the player is running across. So let's grab the player and we're going to set that to nothing and make it so that the player actually assigns this from the player script because the player knows once they land on the ground and then they can assign this and then the ground knows that the player is there and can actually start falling. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to false. 
And then if should fall, go ahead and fall. Otherwise, if not should fall, then we're basically waiting for the player. So if player is suddenly not null, then we're going to go ahead and say should fall. It's true. And then for as long as we're falling, if the player is actually attached, right, the player's not jumping or doing something else, they're actually still attached to the ground, then go ahead and say that, um, basically do the same thing. Uh, player position, right? And then just lower that by the same amount. Dot Y. Like that. And then uh, for the obstacles, we don't really know how many there, there will be. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this simple, make it a list of obstacles. Obstacles. And initialize it to something empty so that it has a value. And then Basically, just easily iterate over this Obs obstacle O and obstacles. We can do the exact same thing again. O position, transform position. And let's first make sure because the obstacles, when the player crashes into them, the obstacles get destroyed. So even though they're added to the list, they don't get removed to the list from the list when they get destroyed. So we're just going to make sure that the, the, the entry in this list that we're iterating over actually still exists, right? So if O does not equal null, simple way to do that. And then O position also dot Y minus equals that, um, follow up, right? And then I lost a curly brace there. Okay, so now we have two questions. One, how do we get the player to assign themselves so that this actually happens and this triggers here? And as well, how do we get all the obstacles into this array? This list, I should say. So the obstacles is easy enough. Let's go over to the ground script where we're actually generating the ground again, right? And let's move this guy outside of this random chance so that we can actually access it. Uh, let's set it to null and now it'll not be null, right? And here's where we generate our box and we can grab the obstacle component from that box. Obstacle, O, box, get component, obstacle. We can also go ahead and just check first whether or not the ground fall actually exists. So if fall is not null, then we're going to grab that obstacle component and add it to the obstacle list of fall. So uh, fall obstacles add uh, just like that. So that takes care of adding the grounds. Now having the player uh, constantly set and unset themselves from the falling ground. So we'll jump over to player. So let's go ahead and um, the player will want to remember which falling ground they're on. So uh, What's it? Ground fall. Uh, just call it fall. It's fine. And then as soon as the player lands, they can assign that, assuming that that script does exist. So here's where we know that we've landed on a ground. So another thing we can do is just say that, um, go ahead and see if we can find ground fall. Right. So I'll just I'll just do something like this. Uh, fall equals. Let's already have that variable. Uh, ground dot get component. Uh, ground fall, and if it happens to exist, then we'll go ahead and let it know that we've landed on it by assigning this. And then we'll make sure that the player is not assigned to the ground fall anymore every time that we jump because we don't want to be pulled down while we're in the air. We only want to be pulled down with the ground if we're currently standing on it. So we jump here. If we happen to be on a falling ground, that would be 
that, then go ahead and say that equals null now. And now that ground won't be trying to pull the player down anymore. And as well, we'll want to unset our fall here. So just go ahead and set that to null. And then we won't care about this anymore. And another thing here, uh, since this ground height is being used continuously uh, in this calculation, we'll want to make sure that this is updated as well. So we'll go over to the ground, well, let's save this. We'll go over to ground fall and go ahead and set the players player.ground height also fall amount. Subtract the fall amount there. All right, so seemingly this is all going to work and in theory it, it will. However, because of the way that we're generating grounds, we're going to have uh, we're going to have a lot of issues, right? So, if you look over here, we're creating a new game object by instantiating this game object, which is just a copy of the current ground. So every new ground, uh, when it reaches a certain point, it creates another ground based on itself. So if that ground happens to have the fall ground script on it, and any of the variables that are set, like should fall, the player, all the obstacles, those are all going to still be there when that's copied, right? And that's bad. So <laughs> we want to make sure to check first before we try to add another, right? And these things will stack, right? So this ground fall will just get added on again and again and again over time. And then you'll have the player attached to multiple of them being put. The player is going to start falling like three units uh, per second instead of one because it's attached to multiple grounds. It gets really messy. So really all you want to do is just check whether the uh, the ground fall script already exists. And if it does, just remove it and then add a new one. Yeah, so let's go ahead and try to grab it, right? So fall is go.get component uh, ground fall. And if this actually exists, we're just going to go ahead and call destroy on it. And that'll pretty much kill it. And then we'll just add the new one right there. Also, since fall has a fall speed, we can make that variable as well. So fall dot fall, fall speed, uh, just come up with some random range from one to three. So it can go anywhere between one and three units per second. Oh, and actually make sure to make these uh, floats. Uh, otherwise it'll just use one, two or three, those whole numbers. So making them floats makes it so the range can be uh, any decimal value in between as well. Oh, and another important thing that I'm seeing here is that I should really move this outside of this if statement since any new ground could have a fallen ground already attached because of the previous one. So go ahead and put that there because this depends on if the previous ground had a fallen ground on it. So then we can also set this to null since destroying something actually takes longer than one frame. So we want to make sure that that is for sure this variable is null so that these obstacles don't attach themselves to something that isn't there anymore. All right, so let's see how this actually goes. All right, let's see, is this one a falling ground? It's not. Is this one? It's not. Let's see how long this takes. That one's also not. This one is, okay. That one, I mean. Uh, and there, something interesting happened. I was kind of scared of that. So, you saw that the player like immediately fell after the ground started falling. And there, there it happened again, right? So, what I think is happening there is that the ground is falling further than the player's raycast to check whether or not there's a ground below him. If you look back here to the player script, you'll actually see that when he's on a ground, if there's no ground below him, ungrounds, the player gets ungrounded and then falls. What we'd likely have to do here is check whether or not we're on a falling ground and then just increase the ray distance if we are, because that falling ground can fall much further than we could ever fall in one frame. So 
then we'll go ahead and set the ray distance. So instead of our velocity times fixed delta time, we'll use the fall speed. Uh, fall dot fall speed times fixed delta time. And then we'll want that to be negative since that's going to be subtracted from our position. So, and we're using vector dot up for the ray direction. And that should be enough to keep us on that platform while it's falling. All right, let's try to fall on ground here. There's one and we didn't fall through it. There's another one and we also didn't fall through that one. Uh, let's test it a few more times to make sure it's not a fluke. All right, I'm convinced. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And as always, I hope this helps. I hope you learned something cool. And don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions if you have any. Thank you very much. Take it easy.